Hello and welcome back to the Mayhem Lab. In this episode, we're going to talk about a kit that we purchased of 37 different sensors for the Arduino. All right, so uh, in this episode, we're going to look at our kits that we bought. Um, it contains 37 different sensors in all. Uh, you can actually get these online in a lot of different places, and we ended up getting them from um, AliExpress. AliExpress, a lot of stuff. Right? Uh, they were twelve dollars, I think, something like that. Including so, shipping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, twelve dollars free shipping from from China. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, but uh, you can get them here in the United States. I think they're around about thirty bucks oh, uh, for the yeah, set. U.S. shipping. Yeah. Yeah, for US, U.S. Yeah. Um, so what we kind of wanted to do is just each talk about a couple of different sensors. We've been playing with them for the last couple of hours uh, and just kind of go over them real quick. So yeah. uh, Kevin made a very interesting toy. So yeah, um, one of the things I tried, there's a little uh, piezo buzzer in there. There's actually two piezo buzzers, one that's active and one that's passive. Um, active means you just have to power it and it just plays one tone, which that's no fun. Uh, but the passive one... Um, you're actually uh, sending it an oscillating signal to cause it to vibrate to make the sound so you can make different sounds. Um, actually, one of the first things I did was had it play the uh, Super Mario Super theme. Mario there was theme. A, a sketch you could download for that. Uh, but then I built this uh, theremin. Um, if you're not familiar with theremin, it's a musical instrument that uses, um, I think it's capacitance and a couple of antennas to change the pitch and other um, uh, aspects of a sound. This is kind of a pseudo theremin um, that's just using light. So I'm using the piezo buzzer and then uh, the light sensor. And so as you kind of block the light, it's going to change the sound that it makes. Focus towards the. That was kind of sound, fun. Sound sensor. The piezo is not the best sound generator, but works out pretty well. Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, fun. Fun idea, you know, a little theremin. I've always actually wanted a theremin. I yeah, thought it was really cool. I was actually you know? looking just a bit ago there, like boards to build like a hardware yeah. analog, a, a shield for an Arduino. Someone's got an open source shield for an Arduino that's a Triple theremin. Nice. Lots nice. of parts on it though, so. I might have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I was playing with is the joystick module that comes with it. Uh, so it's just X, Y, and it also has a Z button click. And then... Um, there's a whole range of different LEDs that come with it. The one I chose to try out, and I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, but it's a three um, multicolor LED, RGB LED. Uh, and so what I did is I found um, a sketch online too that with the Mega, you can change the colors on it. So basically what I did is I took the code for, the sketch code for the um, joystick and merged it with the sketch code for the uh, LED and I use the joystick to change um, the color of the LED so as I change directions on the uh, joystick I can control the color of the LED. One thing we did notice with the joystick is it's pretty sensitive. Um, the output range looks like it's from 0 in one direction to 1024, 1025 in the other direction um, but it's you get most of the uh, the output is in the first I don't know Third. Quarter, yeah, third. quarter to third of the motion. Yeah. yeah, so like the rest of the joystick doesn't really do much. Um, but still, it's uh, it's fun. It works. Um, not very well. I wish the joystick was a little bit more sensitive. Um, but uh, it's it's neat. So Yeah, I'd, I'd hooked up the, my joystick to the uh, piezo buzzer and used it instead of the light. As a, yeah. And so that was kind of neat too to run the theremin by moving the analog joystick. Right. Um, and I'd certainly uh, be happy to post this code on the site. Um, like I said, it's just kind of a mashup of the two different <laughs> examples that are online, so it's nothing real special. Uh, one thing that we did want to say that if you're planning on getting a kit like this uh, and getting some Arduinos, highly recommend a solderless breadboard. Um, got some, I don't know, would these be the medium size? Those are kind of yeah, smaller I, I size. Yeah, I've got a handful of these really small ones that are, are good for a little project, but those are, yeah. those are nice. Those are a nice size. Um, you're going to want a lot of jumper wires. Uh, either male to male, male to female, um, or female to female. Uh, they, I think AliExpress has packs of them as well. Yeah. Uh, all the sensors um, come with male ends on them, and then obviously your Arduino is going to be 
you know, females. Uh, so a, a simple male to female cable is probably going to be your best bet. You probably want the most of those to play with this kit, yeah. uh, but probably want a variety just to, to have. Yeah. So We found that a few of them did require some resistors like the LED. Um, yeah. We've got those like uh, about 200 ohm yeah. resistors on there. The ones I was seeing were from 100, 180, 180 uh, someone at 100 ohms, and then up to 330 ohms. Um, yeah. So. so for the resistors, you want a little bit, or for the LEDs, you want a little bit of resistance, otherwise you burn the LEDs out. Right. Um, I also saw a couple of them that I was playing with um, used a couple of their higher value resistors, it looked like. Um, so having a, a good assortment of resistors is a good thing. Yeah. Um, Oh, you know, one thing that uh, Kevin actually picked up. So when we first started, um, we were playing with the RGB sensor, or the RGB LED here, the, the flat one. Um, we couldn't get it to work correctly. So we moved on to other, other LEDs, figured maybe these were, were broken or bad. Um, stumbled across that the negative connector on the board, the one that actually is labeled for negative or ground, actually needs to be hooked up to your positive by bolt. Yeah, um, yeah they, they even, even in the documentation, they, they, they wire it up that way, but they also call it common cathode. So cathode, cats are positive. Right. Um, so it should have a common positive. So that was kind of weird. Yeah. Um, so we saw that. Uh, I played with a couple other ones too. Um, I tried to do the sound sensor. Mm. Um, there's a, they, they call it big sound and small sound, which I think is right. funny. <laughs> um, I tried both of them and neither one really worked. Like I didn't get any difference in the reading, whether I did the big or the small. Um, I played with, they called this a, uh, light cup. Oh, the magic cup. Yeah. It's, that was pretty cool. It's basically got two little red LEDs, one, or it's got two, two modules. I should have kept it out of the bag. It comes with two modules that are identical and each one has an LED and then a little mercury switch. And I think the theory is when you, I should have left it hooked up, but I think the theory is, you know, as you pour it from one into the other, the mercury switch says, hey, this one's off, this one's on, and this one gets brighter as the light's pouring into the other one. You can yeah. slowly pour the light back and forth. Um, it didn't really work for me, but I think it had more to do with um, the code. I should have just tweaked the sample code I was using. It probably would have, because it did kind of work. Uh, but that was kind of a, a nifty little just fun toy. Yeah. Uh, I tried the, the other one that I was interested in was the uh, heartbeat sensor. Wasn't able really to get that to work. Um, for me tonight. Um, but one that I did get to work, which I thought was very interesting, there's a flame sensor. Um, that, that's not dangerous. Uh, so we've got a flame sensor and the output, the output that it was giving me on the, um, the serial monitor was kind of interesting. Um, it was, it seemed to be steady at about 40-ish, uh, 45 on the output. And then when I held a flame up to it, um, then it went down to like the 20s or the teens. But when I would touch it with my fingers and uh, kind of warm it up, it would spike into the 500 range. So I'm not quite sure exactly what it was measuring or what it's outputting. Um, the code wasn't real specific. It was just, I, I played with it for five minutes. So, But it, uh, it's definitely measuring something. So yeah, play with that more. Um, and they're not all sensors either. Like you saw, it's an LED. That's yeah. not really a sensor. Um, it comes with a little laser. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Laser. Put it behind us. So yeah, it's just a red laser. Um, but you could turn it on and off now with the Arduino, five volts. Yep. Shine it in my eye. If you have um, cats, that could be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they love lasers. So yeah, some of the cool stuff. Um, I played with a touch sensor that actually didn't come in the kit, but uh, it's a capacitive touch sensor. Uh, bought for like less than a buck, I think, too, when we bought the yeah. other stuff. Um, some of the stuff we didn't use, um, I know there's a number of uh, like switches, so you can power mm. something uh, more powerful than like five volt. Um, there's, a, there's a couple other, um, uh, what do they call it, like a touch sensor, or like a... Oh, they've a, got the like, bump, they've the got bump tilt sensor. ones and tilt. bump ones and... Yeah, yeah so like a, lot a of shock things sensor. Like that. Yeah. So you could, you could, uh, you know, have it detect some kind of bump or motion and, you know, use it for something like that. So, yeah, we're actually, uh, I don't know, we have to come up with something to build <laughs> yeah. out of yeah. all these sensors now. It's, it's fun uh, to kind of, yeah, just like pick them apart and fire yeah. them up and see what they do a lot of them so that's kind of yeah, cool and, and the other nice thing too is none of them that i i don't think any of them required 
very complicated programming or like uh, installing any libraries. Yeah. You know, I kind of expect that I have to install a library to use this module, but it really is every one of them has like ground, ground, maybe power, and then a sensor pin. And mm -hmm. the sensor pin you hook up into either an analog or a digital pin, and it's just either outputting yes on, no off, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, an analog signal like the joystick or anything that you're right. using. So yeah, it was pretty easy from that perspective. Yeah, it was, yeah, absolutely. I think it was it was pretty fun, yeah. pretty simple. So, so we'll fun afternoon fun of, of playing with Arduino and uh, right. getting our hands dirty with a little bit of <laughs> hooking stuff up. So yeah, that was it. Uh, basically, just wanted to show off the kit. Um, you know, if you guys are interested in doing Arduino stuff, um, you know. I would recommend this kit. I think it's a nice variety of options to play with. Yeah. Uh, you know. And yeah, and it's not. Yeah. Now it's nice too if we want to do a project. You know, we, especially with the uh, what is the uh, the challenge we're supposed to be doing right now? Use the Arduino to save the world. Yeah. Now we've now we've got some uh, uh, bits and pieces to help us do that. Yeah. So that's <laughs> going to be on an upcoming episode. But that was the kind of the emphasis of I suppose getting this kit right. Is, yeah. Now we have parts to, to yeah. make our Arduino possibly save the world. So, <laughs> uh, sneak peek into that. But cool, awesome. Well, great. Thanks, guys, and Thank we'll you. see you again. See you later.